해수의 자율주행 시스템에 또 근거를 만들었고요. 애플의 반도체에도 그 초기에 싹을 키우는 그런 분입니다. 그래서 이분이 이제 가는 곳곳마다 승승장구를 해왔기 때문에 어, 반도체 마이다스의 손. Yeah, so people sometimes think I move around a lot. I've been working on computer design for 40 years, so it's somewhat natural to work in several places. So when I joined Apple, we were, we were starting to make iPhones, and we wanted to make very high-performance iPhones. And I think we went from a pretty standard phone chip to a very high-performance phone chip, and we solved most of the technical problems. Uh, when I went back to AMD, um, it was clear that AMD didn't have the right design or design. Team or something. They didn't have a very good product, and you know, I worked to pull together the team, the design methodology, and the design to create Zen, which became a great product. When I was finished with that project, I was looking for another hard thing to do, and I talked to Elon about building an autonomous driving chip, which is a really exciting challenge. So I went to Tes Tesla, and we built a chip that drove a car in 18 months, and it became the world's best autonomous driving chip. I like to work on the innovation side and the team building side. I mean, there's a MDD is a really interesting company. They're a great graphics company run by a great CEO. I think it's great. Um, they invested in multiple technologies outside of NVIDIA for years. You know, when, when AI started to run on top of CUDA, it wasn't because they got lucky one day. They've been working on it for 10 years. Right, it's a big investment. And they, the thing I really, I like about companies that have some visionary leadership is, now big companies almost always have their day in the sun when something happens, right? For many, many years, NVIDIA, a great GPU company building games, now they're providing AI, AI software stack and systems, so they're becoming more vertically integrated. Um, sometimes that works out for a while, but it's hardly ever stable. So many companies now are investing a lot of money to go build their own AI chips in-house. Some of those will work, some of them won't. First of all, GPUs are not the best thing to run AI software on. Well, they're, they're better than regular CPUs, but GPUs were built for graphics. And, and we decided to build a processor that, an AI chip that's built around tensor processors. Right, which means you have a very fast math engine. Now, the GPU companies, AMD, Intel, NVIDIA, are all adding tensor processor units to their chips, but their software model still depends on the GPU software stuff, which has been successful so far, but I don't think it's the most popular. And, and that's the position that we're, you know, the design we're doing. ChatGPT or LLM, find a website that I can buy a plane ticket to get me the best price to go to Seoul. 10 years from now, almost all your devices will be smart. Your refrigerator, you could say, hey, what's in my refrigerator and please put an order for this, that, and the other thing. And it's gonna happen. And then at what point will you say your life changed? Yeah, what people always think about is, you know, people ask me, how are you going to compete with NVIDIA? It's a $1.5 trillion company. They sell $100 billion of very high-priced AI computers. That's not our target. Our target market is there's hundreds of AI startups, both software and hardware, that want to build their own products you know, at lower cost, and they need more open access to that kind of stuff. Right, so the RISC-V architecture came out of Berkeley University, started by David Patterson, who I know is a great guy. Um, it started out as a student college project, but then multiple companies said, this is really interesting because we can build our own computer and we can do our own kind of changes to it. And so that got out in the world. And then at Tenstar, we think computers are going to evolve a lot in these years. Right? So I want to be able to build computers with the ideas, the best ideas we have as fast as we can. And I can't do that by either using Intel architecture, which is somebody else's. I can't license it. Or ARM, where I can't change it. Right? So a RISC-V, I can change it. In the short run, you know, the ARM architecture and software is very refined. Intel is very refined. 
very expensive. So if you want to make a product today, that's probably a good answer. But if you want to own your own product and you want to be able to evolve over time and go maybe someplace where nobody else is going, then RISC-V is your only choice. It's the only open market. So everybody has their ups and downs. So I worked with Samsung in the 90s. They helped us build Alpha chips. I worked with Samsung and Apple. And they, they were a great partner. I worked with Samsung at Tesla, where they helped build the autopilot chip. I worked with Samsung at, when I was at Intel, where they built a number of chips for us. And my personal experience, I, I can't tell you about Samsung as a whole. My personal experience is every project I've ever worked with on Samsung has been successful. They go very fast and then you hit a plateau or it's management change. I, you know, I don't know all the details at Samsung, but uh, you know, Samsung's been a great company for a very long time. I'm also doing business with TSMC. So, you know, every time we build a chip, you, you look at all the pieces and then say, what's the best, what's the best solution? We talked to lots of people for our next generation. Samsung had the best, let's say, whole package. And, you know, and I, I like working with them, obviously. So you know, we, we spent a lot of time talking about how do we work together to make a product that's, you know, that's really great. So they had a really good plan. Well, Samsung still makes a lot of products, and they have lots of really good technology. Like you say, they still make the best DRAMs in the world, I think. Uh, they make some of the best camera sensors. So I've, I'm talking to a couple of companies now, and they want me to help them solve their problem. But they want the problem to be in this one area. They said, we think our problem's AI, and I think your problem's not AI. Your problem is how your organization does design. I can't, I can't fix that from outside. If you have access to the leadership technology, you'll buy it. But if you don't, you will invest more money on the follow-on technology. And I think China's got lots of great engineers. And I'm not a political analysts. Uh, what I do know is uh, Chinese companies have invested a lot more money on AI, semiconductor production, equipment production because of restrictions and they're making good progress. So Moore's Law uh, was defined as, you know, transistor density doubles every 18 months. And then that slowed down to two years. And then they sort of shifted it that computer performance will double every two or three years, right? And then, and then that started to slow down for, for a number of reasons. For a while it slowed down, but there's a breakthrough. So it, uh, I've given a talk about that. I call it cascading diminishing return curves. Right, right. So, so the the one curve slows down, but then the invention happens. And you know, right, and your brain is something like 10 to the 18th operations a second at 20 watts. That number is unbelievably better than the best GPU today. We're like six orders of magnitude away from the same performance per per watt. Right. So people say, and I, people told me, Jim, you don't understand. You can't sequence atoms at low cost and no power. It's like, you literally do. Nobody will ever make a computer with the same efficiency as a brain, even though everybody has it. Right? And even weirder, every, every cell in your body has a factory in it to make a whole copy. Of like, so we have technology problems, but we don't have a possibility problem, you would say. I'm interested in that kind of thing. Hey, what should I study to be a chip designer? And I'd always think math, physics, programming, engineering. Look, get a good basics and then read a lot of books. Right? If you want to build something new or do something creative, you have to spend some part of your life being creative. Or, you know, go see really good movies or have something you really like to do. But the basics matter more than the details of today. Like today, everybody, all the college students are studying PyTorch. Five years from now, PyTorch won't, won't exist. Yeah, the next 10 years will be faster. 
and you, you need to have your mind trained to be open. You need to be somewhat broad and really good at science. You know, there's a really good book called uh, Structure of Scientific Revolution by John Schoon, which talks about how you make substantial changes. And it's a fairly complicated topic. And not that many engineers have read that book, despite the fact that their whole life is in technology change. So you know, it's, a, it's a curious thing.